student 006 or learn swain here and um, I finally after quite a while of having no LOS videos I finally have a new dev board now some of you might be asking or wondering why there haven't been any new LOS videos it's because I sort of started getting too slow and I ran into memory problems again and stuff so here's a new dev board that I that recently arrived sorry for not telling you about it and stuff so this is based off an STM 32 F103 uh, you can kind of see it over there it's right in the center little black rectangle over there and um, it's made by Hyro Electronics quite clearly some random Chinese company and it's basically, it's sort of like an Arduino, but it's at the same time, it's not at all. And this is what I'm basically going to be developing on for now. So it's got a screen, it's got an uh, RTC, which is real-time clock. You can sort of see the little battery holder for the RTC over there. I'm not going to unscrew the screen and stuff so you can see it. There's an SD card holder over here, and a little white cable which connects to this thing, an STM, or ST-Link. As you can see, version 2, and a bunch of stuff. And this is the official debugger for the STM32. So, um, without further ado, I will plug it in and show you what I have so far. As you can see, it boots up quite fast because it doesn't do much yet. But, um, well, I have the three basic things working, the SD card, the screen, and the touch screen is working. As you can see, I'm just squiggling random things on the screen right now. And you can push the little reset button, and it starts up again. And if you remove the SD card, if you try to boot it up, it says error 1. SD card not being there tries to start up the SD card. It also loads the calibration data from the SD card for the touch screen, which I think is kind of cool. The library I'm using is STM32+, and it's in C++, so I'm not used to it at all, because I come from Arduino and such. So this is, getting LOS to work on this board is going to be really, really difficult. Because there are three major differences between this and the old version. First of all, um, we're moving from C to C++. And despite the names sounding very similar, they're actually quite different in how they work. Because C++ is object-oriented and has pointers everywhere. Well, programs or code that uses C++ seems to have pointers everywhere. The little star and and symbols or asterisks and yeah. So I, I'm not really used to all that stuff yet. I'll need to get used to that. The second big change, we're moving from AVR to ARM processors. So AVR is mainly what's used in small little things like say the controller of your microwave the little thing that makes the timers count down from whatever you set it to to cook your food that's probably controlled by an AVR processor um, ARM is mostly common in cell phones and such this particular version is the Cor Cortex-M3 I don't know um, this it has subtypes. This specific one is used in more higher level environments, but not exactly for phones and stuff. So you have the Raspberry Pi, that's ARM. Um, all Android phones are ARM. The PS Vita is ARM. So all those portable thingamajigs use ARM. Not the specific subclass I'm using on this one. But yes, that's a pretty big difference from microwave to leading console so, control chip. 
So that's going to be a little difficult. And finally, last difference is going from 8-bit to 32-bit, which is also quite a big difference. 8-bit is what you would find in old consoles like the NES, and 32-bit is what you still find in use for computers, modern computers today, though we are slowly moving towards 64-bit. There are still many 32-bit computers out there, so... Yeah, this, is, this thing's 32 bits, and also we're running at 72 megahertz, which is quite a big difference from the 16 slash 20 megahertz I've been running LOS on. And, yeah, so it's going to go a lot faster and stuff. So, um, there's not much more I can show you. I can't really show you, but it actually gets warm underneath this chip and coming from a guy who's been using Arduinos for everything that is quite strange because I'm not used to processes getting warm in my creations so it's pretty cool to know that we're actually running at fast enough speed to produce a slight amount of heat but of course that's not always a good thing now um, you also might be wondering why this thing is still attached to this device well, I can't get this cable out, it's actually in really tightly. It's really tough to get out, so I just get that in there for the video. And um, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, yeah, This has two USB ports, as you might have noticed. One is UART serial, which is like the normal USB port on an Arduino. It acts as a COM port. And the other one is USB on the go. OTG, which is what you find on cell phones and such, and it also allows you to connect USB devices to this with a little adapter cable, which I have. So I could plug in a USB keyboard, for example, and it would work after a tedious amount of coding, but it would work in theory. So um, yeah, that would be pretty cool to use in LOS. Now. I have never programmed in C++ before, and getting this thing to work has taken quite a few days of uh, playing around, so I hope I can get this working quickly. I still need to get used to all the new C++ stuff, like using objects all over the place, namespace, those double colon things, pointers, and vectors and all that c plus y stuff but um, it will eventually slowly but surely be go on to this board my plans for the future on uh, LOS is I have two des designs or ideas one is to either design my new my own one the, this bottom board over here for mass production and basically have a screen on top of it like much like this one and then have a battery in between these two layers like because you know how thin, thin the cell phone batteries are I could easily fit one right here because look my finger well it doesn't fit through it but it just sort of does so you could fit a battery in there my second plan is to actually I take this board and add some stuff to it because these GIPO pins, the general purpose input output, they broke it out on the sides so I could have a little board attached to here and make it go partially underneath here and it would do stuff like break out the GIPOs and uh, have a battery system. Talking about batteries, um, it's been a tradition for all LOS versions to be able to run off a 9 volt battery. I'm getting to that. Right now, yes, I know I'm using this random USB power supply thing that I happen to have lying around from some sort of MP3 player that's probably broken right now, but you know, it's 700 milliamps power supply, so it's definitely going to be able to power this thing. But I'm still working on the 9 volt thing because, as you can see there, I haven't soldered anything to this yet. 
But yes, I will eventually get to it. I shall strive to make every LOS version run on 9-volt batteries. So yes, that's it. Um, I'm still going to be working on the new LOS and its new file format because I'm going to have a new L code file format to optimize for 32-bit processes and stuff. But you don't really need to worry about that. See, all the big things that have changed, you don't even notice. It's all inside the little processor. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you liked it. Comment, rate, and subscribe so you can see more progress. And, um, bye.